You're listening to Alabama Tradition with Ryan Fowler and Martin Houston on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. 100.9 Tuscaloosa Sports Update. With your Tide Sports Update, I'm Jacob Harrison. Alabama has added another home-and-home series, this time with the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. The Crimson Tide will travel to Stillwater in 2028, while the Pokes will come to Tuscaloosa in 2029. Alabama softball's historic season came to an end Monday night as Team 25 fell 8-5 to Florida State. Crimson Tide finished the season 52-9 and and broke many records along the way in 2021, including finding a new career home run leader in program history in Baylor. Hemphill. And finally, head coach Nick Saban has signed a new contract extension that keeps him in Tuscaloosa through the 2028 season. Coach Nick Saban said in a statement, Terry and I are pleased and happy to sign another contract extension that will keep us in Tuscaloosa through the end of our career. For more details on these stories and more, check out the Tide 100.9 website or download the free Tide 100.9 app. 17 national championships. 27 SEC titles, 131 first-team All-Americans, 70 postseason appearances, 39 postseason victories. This is Alabama football, and this is Alabama tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. And welcome in to Alabama Tradition, the past, present, future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. I am Ryan Fowler, host of the game here on Tide 100.9. And I welcome in Martin Houston, who hosts the Martin Houston Show. Mornings beginning at 6 a.m., a national championship winning fullback at the University of Alabama. Hey, Martin, I hope your day is going well. Welcome into Alabama Tradition. Things are going well, Ryan, and glad to be in with you, sir. Well, you know, here we are, we're at the 8th day of June, and I reference a conversation with Tony Barnhart, uh, who wrote an article a couple of days ago that we are gearing up for the busiest June that he can remember in college football history. I would agree with him. Generally, you and I talked about this yesterday when we were having lunch, uh, but it's, it's slow during the month of May and June. That's not been the case here in 2021 with so many different college football headlines flying off the newsstand. Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a different type of off season, And without a doubt, um, as we talked about yesterday, usually uh, not, you know, making up stuff, but creating the headlines, uh, who's the best in the Nick Saban era and who's the best, you know, all time and which coach would you want and which fan when you build a team up we've had to do a little bit of that this offseason but not a whole lot and it seems like that that's going to be the trend for this summer well this right here I, I i never try to get you fired up i can bring injuries in i can bring uh contact practices that always gets martin martin's uh blood pressure going a little bit what i'm about to say i want to get your instant reaction to it because there was a a conversation, and, and you can go to ESPN, you can go to CBS Sports, you can go to Yahoo, uh, any of the national websites, and you're going to see this conversation that's now generated. Tony Barnhart told us in the next three to four weeks may be the important conversation with expanding the college football playoff. Now, he thinks that uh, the conversation's about to heat up and it will get hot for the next three to four weeks. Here's the conversation. It's not beyond four teams. It's not to six. It's not to eight. But according to Pete Thamel, and I'll quote him, they are literally considering a 12-team college football model. And the reason that they're doing that is they think that it's the best way to get beyond four teams because all these commissioners from these athletic departments or, or conferences are setting down they think that a 12-team playoff is the most likely result. 
Your reaction if we get a 12-team college football playoff? I I don't know if you need 12 um, teams, Ryan. Um, uh, I I think if they're looking at going to 12, there there may be some um, remodeling of conferences that come along with that. Um, Don't be surprised uh, if this doesn't, you know, lead to maybe five super conferences like 16 teams and two at large bids and then one and two, you know, you know, divisional champ type of thing. The question, Ryan, becomes what are they going to do in terms of the number of weeks, the number of games? Um, I, I, I think one of the biggest things, Ryan, is they're going to have to do something. They're looking at a way. <laughs> you know why they're doing it, right, Ryan? Money, money, money. What, what what happened last year? Well, all these athletic departments lost between 50 and 75 million bucks. Okay. And how many uh, conferences and teams really are benefiting from the current system? Uh, three, four. Uh, yeah. Not, not Maybe. even all the five out of the power five. Right. All right. I mean, there hasn't been a national champion from – the Big 12 or the Pac-12 in, in, you know, 10 years, you know, or whatever, maybe longer. And so I think that they're they're looking at how do we get back in it. And if they go with six teams, then, um, then, then that may work. But they're guaranteed to get some of that money uh, if they expand to that many teams. And I think it also puts a few more games on – on, on campus now. Here's the question, Ryan. What's the fallout? Do they do they limit uh, conference games? Are they going to force the the have nots uh, to to break away? Uh, like I said, it, it, it sounds to me like you're positioning for you know some super conferences and. And, and, and a couple at larges, and let the other guys fend for themselves. Well, you know, the minute I heard it, and and someone brought it to my attention, and I had to give kind of an instant reaction to it. Um, it, it was, you know, that conversation, and I immediately during the break, I wrote down why. I mean, will, will we feel like a bigger champion if we go through another couple of games, or if we have to go through? you know, 11 teams rather than the only three teams that are now uh, that we have to go through and be able to win and, you know, be the last one standing. It, it just uh, – I, I, I wish that we would come out and just say it rather than try to disguise it. Of, of Ryan, I, I really – I mean, I don't have a problem with the expansion now. I, I think it's stupid that you have um, – I think it's stupid that you have a championship where it's not decided – uh, on the field through the playing record, it is decided in some boardroom, um, conference room with people who are not playing the game week in and week out. I, I mean, I I personally think that CFB playoffs are better than what we've had, but I still think it's a broken system. And I know a lot of people say, well, it's been the same teams win it every year. But that doesn't mean the same teams will win it every year if you expand it. To me, if you're not going to play head-to-head, uh, then every conference champion, no matter how good we think that conference champion is, in the NFL, every conference champion gets in the playoffs. And then you have one at large uh, bid, uh, and, and then you would take the top six teams. I, I mean, I like six teams. And, and one and two uh, get a bye. Uh, and the the first set week of games are on campus, and the second week of games are on campus. Then you have a destination like a Super Bowl for college football. I think that would be awesome. Uh, so I don't have a problem with the expansion from four teams. And some people say, well, we really hadn't had really good matchups. That's not the point. Uh, you just create opportunities for success. But 12, that's an interesting number. I have not heard anybody say 12. Um, well, and, and I would love to see how that the 12 model kind of works out, Ryan. Well, 
that they've got to be careful here, Martin, because if you put 12 teams and let, let's say that, you know, w- the conversation, I, I think they're on a slippery slope because you do not need to devalue the regular season. That's the one thing that I think college football is a beneficiary from is, is that every game matters. I mean, if you lose and you get beat, uh, then, then it can really impact your, unless you're Ohio State, uh, it can really impact whether you get a chance to play in the college football uh, playoff. But so, Ryan, let me ask you something. Is that is that a is that a notion that's predicated on a bad foundation? I mean, probably. Why, yeah, why, probably. Why, yeah. why? Why? What? Name what sport a champion has to be perfect in? Other so, than college, other than college football. Well, I mean, no, it's it's a great point. No, I, I mean, mean that, when you, we yeah. all. We always say that, but think about how college football is the only sport without a true preseason, okay? So teams don't – but we have a spring practice, but then – and now with the change in the rules, it's really going to make it kind of crazy in terms of who you end up spring with versus who you start the season with with the roster in the transfer rule. That's going to make it even crazier. But you're going to go – Alabama's going to go into the first week, Ryan, and most of the time – Nick Saban lost to Ole Miss when? Uh, October, first couple of weeks of October. You you know, was the first game that – I thought he lost one like in the third week of the season. Um, Well, no, you know what? It may not have been that late. Maybe it was. I think it was early. I think they were all early in the season. And then he had the whole season to to try to come back. But just think if Alabama had had a preseason. So so my point behind that is I don't know that that being perfect is the way to make the season valuable. Why not have seeding? That's what makes the season valuable, Ryan. If I get to sit home um, weeks one and two, I mean uh, the first week while you play – and then you have to come in after I've been on a break, and then I get a home game as well, and I get to play at home until, even if they go to the, I think you create other ways to make the regular season matter, and it's not just winning. um, Because, you know, I think back, and I, I know I'm going into archives here, Ryan, but I think back to 1991, the 92 team was the best team in college football. You know who the best team in college football was at the end of 91? The same team that won the championship. But we lost to Florida the second game of the season, and we were wow. out. And we were out. I mean, we were still trying to find a quarterback. Ryan, we went through a whole spring with Danny Woodson as our quarterback, and we were going to run an option offense. And we didn't get a preseason to practice it. We really didn't run it against Vanderbilt. We pulled it out against Florida. We had six fumbles. Jay Barker came in in that game, and he started the rest of the season, and we never lost again the rest of my career. And until the two years later. But that one game, and we were out. And that's just, you know, so I don't have a problem with a few extra seeds and but but don't we and, and and this is the part that I think is slippery though, because the one thing that they are talking about is making automatic qualifiers, so every conference champion would be in according Which, I, to. Say it one more time, Martin. I agree with our. I, I, if you're talking about the Power Five, I'm okay with that. But what what if you have a slip up? What was it a couple of years ago? Uh, when you look at Ohio State, um, let's see, was it? It was Indiana. Maybe it was Iowa. Penn I'm State to... beat. Penn, you talking about when Penn State was the conference champion and Ohio State got selected? Yeah, but I think there was another previous time too. That uh, was it. I'm trying to think if it was uh, was it Wisconsin that was in that had multiple losses. So the the, the point that I'm trying to make is, I think there should be a cutoff. Like if you got so many losses. I don't think you have any business playing for a national title. 
Who beat who who won who beat the perfect Tom Brady team? Uh, help me, help me. The New York Giants. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Who right, were right. nine and yeah. seven or yeah, or yeah, t- yeah, ten yeah, and okay. six? What they? Made, I mean, did they even have that? That's what I'm saying. They were they were like nine and seven or some crazy. What I'm saying is, if if you if your conference, Ryan, may be better than everybody else. A a two loss Georgia team that loses to that, that loses to. Alabama and LSU is, is probably better than, but somehow, some way, they they win their division. Then they turn around and beat Alabama or LSU in the championship game. They may be better than a, a, a undefeated team from another conference. So you, you you got beat by two of the best teams in the country. Not if they win their conference. I'm so, just so, but, but you, you, you look at it. I mean, sometimes there's a conference that doesn't doesn't need a team in the college football playoff. Based and, on what? Well, based on that they're they're not a quality team. I mean, I mean, I think we could, you know, uh, you look at the ACC. If Clemson, generally they they've been the dominant team over there. Yeah. But what what happens if you slip up a, in a championship game? And I don't know. I mean, just throwing somebody against the wall. Let's say a a seven and five team beats them in a championship game. You don't want to put that team in, do you? Yeah, if they won their conference. Ryan, what did everybody say about Alabama going into the Miami game in ninety two? Y'all had no chance, no chance. And I got, I got to go to break. So Bryant sending me a, uh, <laughs> a thing. Let's come back on the other side. We'll continue this this conversation because the, at some point there's got to be somewhere they're going to have to give a little bit. Okay, because. You're going to stretch out a season that starts late July and work it all the way to end of January. That at some point you're going to have players that go, hold on, hold on. You got to look at the bottle now. Are they going to try to squeeze this in? I remember 2016. I was in that locker room when that Alabama team defended 100 plays, and some of that self-inflicted. But I remember the fatigue that there was players just laid out in the locker room because they literally had no energy uh, because they had ran through this. It's just I, I, I think about that side of things, too, and I also think about something you said, and I'll remind you something of that because I think it's a great point. I referenced it earlier. We'll continue with more Alabama tradition, past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama football countdown clock is driven by Crawford Insurance, Tuscaloosa's low-cost auto insurer. Call 752-6489 for a free quote today. Walter! Walter! There are, there are, there are 88 days until Alabama football. Get 15% off a set of Brake Mess Select, Select Pro, or Import Direct brake pads and two rotors now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. You are listening to Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler. Your connection to Tuscaloosa and the University of Alabama Athletics on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, so we welcome you right back into Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's Martin Houston. I'm Ryan Fowler. We're talking about this college football playoff conversation uh, that's been thrown out and about in college football and the playoffs and uh, whether it should be a 12-team, 8-team. Seems like 12-team is getting some traction in the last uh, maybe 10, 11, 12 hours, pretty much the day. Uh, started maybe about midday. No, it's probably about mid morning, and then it's uh, it's continued as we've traveled throughout the day. We had Tony Barnhart earlier, and really kind of broke the the story. Uh, Pete Tamil's out there, also out there. CBS Sports, Dennis Dodd's out there. Uh, seems like there's a major conversation around twelve team college football playoffs. I got to remind Martin Houston of something that he said. It, it, it's probably been five or six months ago. But we were talking about how 
the NCAA, and I know that they're two separate entities. When you look at the NCAA and college football playoffs, uh, they I know it looks like the same, but they're really two different financial groups. But the NCAA has limited contact practices for the upcoming uh, fall camp. Uh, mm-hmm. They've limited them during the regular season. Now, that's something that Martin and I talked about uh, a few months ago. And Martin said, you're kind of speaking out of both sides of your mouth. You're cutting back on the number of contacts that we can have in practice, but then you're trying to add extra games. <laughs> so when when we look at it, Martin, let me, let me take this, because I haven't been able to win any of these arguments with you uh, <laughs> with, with these, these college football playoff discussion. Um, pick up and go there when we talk about uh, injuries and cutting down the number of contacts, but then adding games on the back end. I don't think they're going to add games, Ryan. I think you're going to see uh, – I told you they're going to put the squeeze on the smaller schools. I think those games are going to be off of the um, schedule. Uh, okay, think, that, that's that's a unique one. Okay, okay. I, I think you may see us look a lot like uh, the other divisions, and we may be back to 9-1 to and one or 8-2. and two eight um, conference games or nine conference games and one or two at larges against another power five school. And then you end the season with 10 games or, or maybe you go back to 11 like they had when, when we played and, and then a 12 team playoff would probably, I'm assuming get you what, four games, um, maybe four or five games. And then you're looking at another 14, 15 game season, I think what you also have to start recognizing, Ryan, is the administration is going to push back on the players now and say, okay, boys, you want to have name, image, and likeness. Uh, You want to be get some money. You want to be compensated for playing this game. Uh, One of the consequences is that that is to maintain the revenue streams that we've currently had. We're going to have to get more games. Uh, and they're going to sell it on that. So I don't know that you're going to have any more games for the champion um, than what we have today. Um, other teams may have more games, though, that, that are trying to get to the championship compared to what it's typically been. But Alabama's already playing, what, 14, 15, 15 games a season? Yeah, if, if they're able to go through it, uh, yeah, it's usually 15 games. So, so you go back did- down to, like I said, nine – Nine conference, one or two at larges, uh, and like I said, I think those at larges, Ryan, will be from conferences, uh, power five conferences, and I think you may see the smaller schools that don't get absorbed into the uh, the, the the power conferences. I think you're going to be sixteen teams, and I, I just we're, so, we're about to see an overhaul. Of well, and. And, and Martin, look at look at the 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 group of five uh, conferences for a minute. I think we play with these guys too much. In other words, I think we dangle the carrot out in front of them, and we tell them, "Hey, listen, if you'll do this, we'll make you a part of it. If we do this, and it's like they move. Um, I'm not sure what the statement is, but it, it's like we move the target for these guys. Move the needle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, well, yeah. It's it just like we 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 tell them that, hey, this is where we want you to be, and that it's always they're just right outside, right right outside. Oh, you know, I'm sorry, you know, you and and so I wish we would just be up front with those group of five and just look at them and say, listen. I don't care what you do. If you beat everybody 75 to nothing and you don't give up one entire point, you're not going to be a part of this. Just quit lying to them and yeah. telling them that they're a part of it when they're really not. And, and, and I get it. I understand that financially, you know, nobody wants to see a Clemson play a San Jose State or nobody wants to see a, you know, an Alabama play uh, a Memphis or a, a smaller team like that. But, and because and, really it's all about that's what we always get clouded in with our focus is because we forget it's it's really not about the purest of the sport. It's about that dollar bill. That's why they're doing it. But right. Right. What do you think would happen if you end up with five super conferences with 16 teams? 
all of a sudden some of these kids are say UCFN and gets in to the SEC or the ACC, but South Florida doesn't. What do you think is going to happen to UCF? Well, those, probably those you know, legit it, D1 players that are choosing South Florida right now are going to go where? To UCF, right? Probably Central Florida, yeah. Yeah, and that kid who is who is who is who has been, you know, uh, going to Florida, Florida State is now going to go to UCF. So all of a sudden, some of these schools that are the Power Fives, uh, UCF will have the money if they were in a conference. They would have the money, the alumni, the backing, the 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 support. I mean, they they dwarf most schools. Um, and so if they were to get into an SEC and become competitive in that conference, all of a sudden they would be a money draw. So you be it, it just be different when you're playing those teams if they're part of your conference or part of the SEC or part of the ACC versus them being you know in a group of five. And and like so you could said, you, that, could you see conference expansion coming out of this? I, I, I mean, if we, I think that's what's going to happen. I, I I think. I don't know how you keep trying. I don't see how you keep running this model, Ryan. Um, when the, the the powers that be, the most influential, the money makers, and all of that are you know the Alabamas of the world and all that, but ABC school and their professor and their I mean their president and their AD has the same power as Greg Burns. I, I just you, I I don't see that. I don't know in what system and what world that works long term, and um, when it when it comes to money, and and I think eventually college football is going to figure that out that they they can create more money, and that 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 that's it's gonna just gonna be another subdivision. It's gonna be between FCS and FBS. Well, I will agree with, with, with one thing, that I think that college football has outgrown the governing body. And I think that we need to find a way uh, to look beyond the NCAA because we've added more responsibility to a group that can't even govern the current athletics. I mean, like pre-spring, like before this name, image, and likeness gets started, before the transfer portal uh, when you look at these these kids that are transferring, and I'm sure it probably happens here just like it does everywhere else, you know, they're going into the transfer portal. They've already got their destination uh, before. So you're telling me that the coaches are not contacted? It, it's the NCAA can no longer govern. And, and they've really done a poor, pitiful job for the last 35 years. Right. Did you, did you hear that the kid from Ohio State went into the portal to come to Alabama? He wouldn't – he wouldn't – I mean – he didn't make any bones about it. Um, Hank South told me that uh, Henry Toy Toy's uh, dad said that they're going to go where Nick Saban tells them to go. This was when he was looking at between Alabama and Ohio State. He trusted Nick Saban that much that he reached out to Nick Saban. He didn't hide it. He didn't hide that fact. Well, and I, I wonder. I got to go back and read some of the bylaws because remember this is just you know being in, in implemented uh, right. you know within the last thirty days, but I wonder if it can be if it can be a one way street. In other words, they can reach out to you. It's kind of like during some of the dead period, they can reach out to you, but you can't reach out to them. You know, maybe that's legal from from a standpoint there. Um, but I, but I, I know I they did have some. They did have some tampering rules out there. Um, that's just put in for Kirby Smart. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> hey, Martin, when you look at Kirby Smart, you look at all these uh, transfer portals. I-, I know the Georgia fans are celebrating, but I think this plays another level of of, of pressure on Kirby. He has no excuses now. If he doesn't win now, I'd fire him. I, I would literally just fire him. If he keep winning national title this year, I'd just fire him at the end. Well, Ryan, is it is is but then do you outweigh weight saving? I mean, with Kirby, 
Well, I mean, yesterday's <laughs> contract extension, uh, I think Nick Saban was sending a loud message. There's some folks out there running at shops about me going to retire. I'm getting old. And he just signed a three-year added-on extension. So now it's an eight-year deal. He just you sent know a loud what that message. Was, you know what that was about, though, right? Yeah, it's about recruiting. He still, yeah, that's right. He is still going to retire at 2025. Well, yeah. Did, did you notice the contract, what it said? Yeah, that he it, gets a completion I, bonus through 2025. Yeah. yeah. But you can't But you can't take his team right now and say he's going to retire. Oh, right? oh okay. He, okay he, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yep. you can't go to that recruit and say, hey, if you sign with Nick Saban, he's not going to be here. The only class you'll be able to say that will be the 2025 class. That's a good point. Very good point. And, yep. And and he 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 covers himself up until that point. And and because I think it's important to Nick Saban that he leaves his program in a, in a really good place because of his ego, and um, he wants it to be good when he's gone. And I think that's why he signed an extension. I don't think he has any intentions. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But either way, if he still wants to retire at twenty 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 five, Ryan, he just bought. Uh, he just shut up the naysayers, um, and he will be able to recruit strong for for three more solid years. So you and think right about after it. That, let me let me say one other thing. Right after that comes out about the extension, Ryan, he offers a kid uh, uh, a quarterback, uh, uh, a twenty twenty five quarterback. I don't know if you saw that. I did not. I did not. Yeah. Yeah. His dad, this kid's dad, is an MMA fighter. Oh, I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. kid was a 2025. He's a 2025 signee. So, well, yeah, I saw the photo, and I, I wasn't trying to take a shot at the kid, but I was like, wow, that's, that's a small looking quarterback there. He's I mean, 5'11", 165. You know that 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 quarterbacks are changing, man. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, yep. Uh, Davy Davy Belfort. Yeah. Okay. 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 Hey, we 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 could discuss a lot of that when we look at the world of recruiting because that's the other part that's changed uh, of how you know you re-recruit these guys. Let's break here. That's Martin Houston. You're listening to Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Pick it up, guys. Um, Hot! Is Alcy having no fun? Have some fun, man! Talking Alabama Crimson Tide football on Alabama Tradition with Martin Houston and Ryan Fowler in Tuscaloosa on Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. All right, so we welcome you right back into Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's Martin Houston. I'm Ryan Fowler. We've been talking about this 12-game college football playoff or 12-team college football playoff. Uh, but, Martin, I want to tie all this together when you look at the challenges facing college football. And I don't say that they're, you know, they're not all bad, but uh, it's just the landscape of college football is changing, whether we use the word re-recruiting whether we use uh, the name, image, and likeness conversation. I mean, there's just so many different things that are changing. Uh, in the last 30 days, we've watched two historic coaches retiring, Coach K and Roy Williams. We've watched Nick Saban extend uh, his contract and say, you know what, bring it on, bring it on, I- I'll adjust. But going back to Coach K and Roy Williams, do you think they, in just your opinion, because both of them have said, you know, they've answered the question the right way. But do you feel like that some of the landscape that's happening in college athletics influence maybe their retirement, uh, their decision to get out of the game? You talking about some of the recent changes and yeah, just with like yeah, with name, image, and likeness, uh, transfer yeah. portal. I mean, 
just the oh. amount of pressure that now, I mean, a co- a college coach, he no longer has a dead period. I mean, I don't know when they're going to take a vacation. I mean, it's like right. a 12 month, 365 for these guys. When um, <clears throat> when you look at um, these coaches and and all that, what do we say? W- one of the things that has made Nick Saban uh, relevant and be able to keep his dynasty rolling. That he's been able to adapt. Yes, and and despite how much basketball has changed. Uh, North Carolina and uh, Duke overall, they've, they've made some changes, but not wholesale. You know, the biggest change I think I've seen Coach K make was that he started recruiting some one and dones. Uh, and I think that was really hard for him. Uh, and I don't think he likes it. Um, and you saw he was able to be relevant that way for a few years. But this past year, it caught up with him, right? And I just don't think that those guys are, like, wanting to change yet again. I think Nick Saban loves the – I think the change gives him a fresh start, a new start. I think he likes the the reevaluating. Anytime someone is as critical of themselves as he is, change – External change for him helps him keep himself engaged instead of him having to manufacture change. And I just, Ryan, think about what happened this year in recruiting. What was Nick Saban known for? His most valuable thing was to be able to get the players on campus and put his eye on them, right? That was his, that was his. Sure, sure, sure. So what did he do in a, in a year where you could not see the players at all, they couldn't come to campus. He just goes out and he, he, for, for about a month to a month and a half, we were all panicking, right? Oh my God. When is Alabama going to do? Well, all he did was he went in and he took a month to a month and a half and redid how he recruits. I mean, he literally rewrote the book and then he recruited the greatest class that's ever been recruited. Uh, the guy just thrives on change, so I think that's why you see him so much more engaged versus other guys retiring. Well, I think you said it right there, and we, and you and I have have heard him say it over and over and over. He loves a challenge, and you know it's whether it's the the up tempo offense, uh, whether it's hiring what six seven coaches. Um, everything that you've thrown at this guy, I. One of these days when we write this Nick Saban dynasty book and and we talk about what Alabama's been able to accomplish, it, it might be, um, you know, back when you and I, I know nowadays, I, I guess they wouldn't even know what an encyclopedia is. Um, but <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Remember we had to do these projects and you get out of encyclopedias, you had to do right. search. I mean, we'd you go through nine encyclopedias, just try to do one research paper and, when it, it, it will not be a book, it'll literally be a encyclopedia uh, that that it will just be a reference book of how many times this guy literally adjusted. And I guess the great ones are able to do that. I mean, Coach right. Bryant did it six and five in sixty nine and six and five in seventy, and then he went to the wishbone. And but it's more than just one time. It just seems like. They're throwing more things at him, and he's deflecting them. Like, oh, hey, what, what else you got? Come on. Is that all you got? I mean, it's like he's challenging these guys. How are you want to take me down? I, okay, okay, okay. All right, then I'll sign a contract. It's just like he counters everything with a more powerful punch. What What did we think when we lost that one-second game to um, Clemson uh, on that last-second play? If we had won that game, what would have been the off-season conversation about that particular team? It was the greatest defense, defense ever. Defense, yeah, that ever we've ever seen. had, yeah. Okay. That college Let's, football's ever had, yeah. Right. What was this year's conversation? Best offense we've ever seen or won a. Right. That's a five-year one recruiting class 
transition. In one class. Wow, great point. You never thought about what you yeah. He went from winning a championship or playing and competing and winning championships with the greatest defenses ever to the greatest offenses ever. Look at when when we talk about the early Nick Saban recruits, who do we talk about? Hightower, McLean, all the guys going to the league, you know, Upshaw. That that's who we talk about, right? We do, yeah. Now who do we talk about? We talk about those speed guys, those guys that can cover in space, the guy that can be a you know, a three down linebacker in current college football, not three downs ten years ago, but in the current game that we play, sideline to sideline guy. College football changed on him and in in within three years, within three years from losing to Auburn because of the lineman down the field and and then the then losing to Johnny Menzel. Within three years of that time frame, three to four years of that time frame. Nick Saban had totally converted his offense, Ryan, and he now this year, this year, uh, I'm willing to bet, I have not done any statistical math on it, Alabama will have more QB starts in the NFL than they've had since maybe Stabler and or Rutledge. Yeah, and, and we had, you had Rutledge and you had Richard Todd. Okay. So you would, yeah, so you would have had you, so since you, them. Yeah. Since them, if you add all of the QB starts, it, since then, if you had all the QB starts together, he'll have more this year with his three quarterbacks than Alabama's had. Uh, and then if AJ starts, he'll have AJ as well, because <laughs> AJ may get to start a few games this year with you know with the Falcons. So. I mean that's I mean that's that that's the greatness of of who he is and when you start talking about past present and future it doesn't get any better than what we have had the distinct privilege and opportunity as fans I don't I think we well, try to appreciate it but we you can't even you can't properly appreciate what he's done and and you got to remember, we're all habit forming. We drive the same way to work. We we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. I know I don't. I mean, I like right. my comfort zone. And Nick Saban is almost forced to get out of his comfort zone so often. Brian's telling me we need to go to break. Let's break. We'll come back. That's Martin Houston. I'm Ryan Fowler. This is Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Um. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. A warm, humid afternoon. Intervals of sunshine, a few passing showers and thunderstorms are likely through tonight. The high today, 86, the low tonight, 69. Or tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with scattered showers and thunderstorms again. The high, 87. I'm James Spann of the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 74 degrees in Tuscaloosa. The host of the game, Ryan Fowler, and the host of the Martin Houston Show, Martin Houston, have combined to offer a show filled with in-depth analysis of Alabama football and more. Alabama Tradition broadcasts live on Tide 100.9 every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. and is available live and on playback on numerous affiliates around the Southeast. Check out alabamatradition.com for a list of affiliates as well as other great content. All right, so we welcome into Alabama tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. We've got about five minutes left here. That's Martin Houston, Ryan Fowler. Martin, I feel like that, uh, you know, we've spent about 55 minutes here talking about Alabama football and college football. And, you know, I, I guess i got to go back here for just one minute to softball last night. You know, people love to watch Alabama get beat. And I'll provide you some proof. Women's College World Series drew one million sixty-four thousand, one million sixty-four thousand largest pre-finals audience on record 
uh, when you look at Alabama's game last night, uh, averaged 1.63 million viewers, second most pre-final. And all this is different statistical categories when you look at it there. It's up 5% over last year uh, or the previous year because they didn't have one last year. But it's it's people love to watch Alabama lose. And, uh, you know, that's the – that's a big topic of conversation uh, when you look at last night. Uh, your reaction, Alabama uh, dropping uh, pre-championship series to Florida State. Yeah, um, disappointed uh, for them uh, in terms of the, the result of the season, Ryan. Um, but, man, I it, it's hard for me. You can always question, and in the words of Pat Dye, Hindsight's fifty-fifty. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I tickle myself every time I quote Pat on that. But <laughs> he, the late Pat died. It's hindsight, of course, is twenty twenty. But but when you look at it, of course, people are questioning whether he should have pitched Montana uh, on Sunday or not. Ryan, it's hard for me to be down on a player uh, that won fourteen games, had uh, all of those games. Uh, plus 18 uh, straight games with 10 or more strikeouts, a perfect game. Um, just great coaching, uh, great preparation, great scouting on the other side. And um, I just hate it for her and for that team. Uh, they probably overachieved and got on a hot streak, uh, and they just ran into a team that had momentum. Uh, but kudos to Coach Murphy and that team and, and Montana uh, Fouts and and, and a shout out to Alexi Kilfor for, you know, uh, taking the beating she took from the Alabama fans for not winning, even though I thought she pitched well enough to win, um, and coming in and at least holding the Seminoles at bay to give her team a chance to come back. Well, and you know, it's I, I'm not an expert by no means on softball. Uh, it just I thought this team had it, and then the more I watch Oklahoma, uh, you know, anything can happen once you play the game, and you never want to pass up the opportunity, but it, it just seemed like they're the team to beat, and I'd love to have had a shot at them, uh, especially with, you know, Montana Fouts and what she was able to do. Uh, but, man, it was uh, it, in, incredible team. I mean, I guess the position there, I've always – respected uh, coach patrick murphy i like him uh he's well respected in the hitting world he you know was an olympian but what he's been able to build here is pretty incredible yeah right i would say that you know um montana fouts had if you were to say what's the greatest single performance by an alabama athlete uh regards to sport she'd be in that conversation any sport any generation any time and had coach murphy pull this off you know, where would he have ranked amongst the Alabama coaches on the campuses, on the campus of the UA? So close, no cigar, uh, but but they'll be back and they'll be relevant again and hopefully they can get over the hump. But Montana Fouts reminds me of the, the quarterback that needs to add one more thing or the running back that needs to add one more thing. She just has to get something that she can pitch down in the zone consistently to counter that rise ball. So and she'll get there. That is our friend Mark Houston. You can hear him mornings beginning at 6 a.m. here on Tide 100.9. Uh, we pick up every day at 2 o'clock. We form together here on every Tuesday uh, from 6 until 7. Alabama tradition brought form back in uh, the Tide 100.9 studios. Uh, Mark, it's been a lot of fun, man. Good, good night, my friend. Good night. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. We'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon. Uh, this has been Alabama Tradition, the past, present, and future of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Need parts? O'Reilly Auto Parts has parts. Need them fast? We've got fast. No matter what you need, we have thousands of professional parts people doing their part to make sure you have it. Product availability. 
Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. 